And the next sacred cow is get a job or go to school and get a job. Now, the problem with getting a job is who do you think pays the most taxes? The owner of the business or the worker? To that, I'll turn to my accountant here, Tom. Well, it's, it's clearly the, the employee who's paying the most taxes. And, you know, I, I started as an employee right out of school, and I was paying high taxes. Even though my, my job is to reduce taxes, I was paying high taxes. And then I started... <laughs> I know, ironic, isn't it? <laughs> and, then, and then about 15 years ago, I started my own uh, business. I, was, I started my own CPA firm, and I was now self-employed. And I was even paying more taxes. So it wasn't until I started acting like a bigger business and was really a, a significant size business that I started paying less taxes. And it's because it's the business owners and it's the, entre it's the entrepreneurs and it's the investors, the active investors, that really pay the least amount of taxes. Time out. During this program, you'll hear a lot about ESBNI, also known as a cash flow quadrant. E stands for employee. Employees have a job. S stands for self-employed small business or specialist, like a doctor or lawyer. These people own a job. B stands for big business, 500 employees or more, and these people have other people working for them. And I stands for an investor, and investors have their money work for them. Now, my poor dad always said to me, go to school and get a job, and he wanted to be, become an employee or a specialist like a doctor or a lawyer. My rich dad said, if you want to be rich, you have to be on the business owner or the I side. And that's the difference between my rich dad and my poor dad. If you look at the uh, cash flow quadrant, you have the ESBNI. The people that go to school are on the E and the S side. The S stands for specialists like a doctor or a lawyer, and E's are employees. But doctors and lawyers pay the highest taxes, right? Oh, by far. It's, it's those people that are self-employed, because not only are they paying the highest income taxes, they also get the privilege of paying Social Security taxes and Medicare taxes on everything they earn. So th they're paying extra taxes just to be in that S quadrant. Right, so when you go to school, again, this academic and professional, you go to school and my mother wanted me to be a doctor, if I had followed in that footsteps, I'd be paying the highest tax possible. And they make, the, they make a lot of money, but they pay the highest percentage in taxes. So that's why this relates back to go to school. That's right, and, and they actually have the fewest options of reducing their taxes. The, the tax laws are really geared towards those people who are creating jobs. You know, and those are the entrepreneurs, those people who are uh, creating housing and, you know, building real estate because that's, the government understands, that's what we need. You know, we want the private sector to do that, and so we're rewarded for doing what the government wants us to do. And that's really all the tax law is. It's a, it's a system of rewards for people doing what the government wants you to do. Plus, you know, the other part of it, too, is this whole idea of getting a job. There was some kind of a myth out there that goes with get the job, get a safe, secure job. And so that by getting a job, somehow you're going to be taken care of for the rest of your life. And all you got to do is pick up any paper to see how many tens of thousands of people are losing their jobs. There are no safe, secure jobs. And now we're competing with India and Asia for jobs that were sacred to, to America at one point in time. So this whole idea of having a job is, that was secure is probably the most insecure thing you could be doing right now. The yeah, idea of a secure job is an industrial age idea. Exactly. Right. The only option is put into your head is go get a job. And I wasn't it's around. Yeah, I wasn't around entrepreneurs. I wasn't around business owners growing up. I was around employees. When I um, first started my company 15 years ago, I, I went back to my class reunion, which is always an interesting thing. And I remember saying to them, "Yeah, you know, I, I started a company about five years ago." And they looked at me like, "Oh," and, they, and some of them even said it. They go, "You're so brave." <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, I've had this company for five years now. That is the longest I had ever worked anywhere. See, without financial education, you have to get a job. What's tragic today is so many people losing their jobs, they go back to school to get another job, but they're now competing with their kids. You know, uh, That's insanity. So we're not saying jobs are bad. We're just saying as entrepreneurs, our job is to create jobs. The government doesn't really create jobs. They need more entrepreneurs. I didn't even know there was another option growing up. I didn't know there was another option. I didn't know. I thought all you could do was get a job. 
So again, it's not right or wrong to be an employee, but I'd like to know what my what my options are. Right, because were you, when you were in school, do they say, uh, go to school, get your diploma, so you can become an entrepreneur? No. I mean, you'll never hear that in the school system. Um, no, they said work your way up the ladder, oh. get the bigger paycheck, get, get a better a job, job higher better pay. Job. It, but you're right, job is the only option that you'll hear in school as a rule. And job stands for just over broke, you know? Well, right. broke. To me, the real issue with the job is it's the highest risk profession you can have because you only have one client. Now, I, you know, when I started my business 15 years ago, it was after being fired from a job. And, and, what, and <laughs> what I recognized was that, you know, I had no control over my life because I had one client. That was my employer. Whereas now, now I have hundreds and thousands of clients. One client fires me. It's not the end of the world. You know, now my risk has gone down con considerably, almost to nothing. Where when, when you have a job, I mean, it's just a high risk play. And so the other thing is, you're in complete control. That's the piece that I like. I like being able to, if I lose a client or I you're, lose an, you're an entrepreneur because nobody would hire you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm unemployable. I There's no question. <laughs> But, the, the truth. but it's nice, so like, like you know, like if you're going to lose some business or or you do lose some business, you can go out you can and something. you can go out and generate business and 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 fill that gap. Financial security is more important than job security. Time out. E's and S's get punished for making mistakes, or they lose their job. B's and I's get richer from their mistakes because they learn from their mistakes.